All right, cool. Let's get this thing rock and rolling, Brent. Thank Good. you for uh, being here, man. Of course. Right on. How you how you doing? Good, man. Busier than ever, to be honest with you. So times are rolling. That's good. That's good. Um, for those of you that don't know, Brent, Brent, you're uh, out in uh, Arizona, right? Located in Scottsdale, correct. Awesome. You guys uh, heating up down there yet or what? You know, it's about 80 degrees uh, pretty consistently, so we won't complain. It's usually right around mid-May when it gets pretty gnarly, and then it's going to roll through that almost to like Halloween. So right. we'll take the 80s all day long. What do you think of uh, Major League Baseball thinking about making that the permanent destination? You know, <laughs> so I mean, it's baseball games. I know for sure. In the summers, I mean, it's no joke. I don't know how these guys can go out there and play when it's 112, 115, because it really does get there. So, you know, th there's so many of these uh, spring training stadiums, though. But they, you know, some of those even hold 13, 15,000 people like the Cubs. So you'll be right. interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, my family just, my in laws just bought a house out in Mesa. Yeah. Um, and then good friends of mine live down in that area too. So I've been out there for spring ball, but I just, I think it's be interesting if they're going to try to do that in hundred degree weather. I agree. Yeah. So right on, man. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you're in the trucking industry, but you know, tell everybody else what you, what you got going on right now. Yeah. So, uh, Bren Orsuga, again, based here in Scottsdale, uh, company name is Pinnacle Growth Advisors. I started that back in, uh, mid 2014 from nothing, literally not one client no real pipeline or bench of candidates, if you will, like just literally started from ground zero. So we focus solely in the trucking industry uh, to narrow it down even more, really focus on three sectors within there, do a lot within what they call third party logistics and the brokerage arm. So I'm really, really a big component or fan of kind of the niches, as you know, my saying. Yep. Uh, and so really done a good job from there. And, you know, the last five years kind of really just blown up to over a seven figure business. Beautiful, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know I've been following you for a while. So um, we've had you on, on the show here before. So I appreciate you coming back. Um, before we get into the fun stuff, family and everybody's safe as well. Everybody's yep. healthy going through all this this craziness that we're going through. And with little kids, everyone's in the same boat, right? With a couple of yep. little kids at home to trying to homeschool them the best we can. You know, luckily, all, we can still come to our offices. So we're not like home home. Uh, mm -hmm. That's been a blessing. But, you know, everyone's in the same boat right now. Right. What do you, you know, I mean, obviously we're a couple of weeks, actually, I mean, I've been, I've been on lockdown for a month now, but <laughs> nationwide, it's been more like a couple of weeks that we've been, you know, really impacted by this uh, COVID-19 stuff. I mean, what have you been focusing on, you know, since that's kind of hit? You know, for me, it's, it's really making sure that you're keeping the relationships you have in place. You know, I think there's a time and a place to go out and get new business. I think that's a component that we should be focused on right now. But there's one saying that was told to me a long time ago that I've never forgotten. I think is important for anyone who watches this. Call your customers before they call you. You always want to make sure that you're reaching out and touching them. And it doesn't even have to be about business, right? Just how are right. you doing? Just checking in. What do you see on the horizon? How can we be of service? How can I help you? That goes a long way, right? Because so many people just go in with the attack or they just try to get business and they remove the human factor. Right. They have to remember, like, we're in the ultimate people business. Like, be a human first. There'll be a time and a place to talk about everything else. So for right. me, we just a lot of touch point, a lot of just checking in and just kind of seeing, engaging where people are. Right. What's happening with your, with your industry specifically? You know, I think trucking, I think of lots of people could be busy right now, but like, what are you seeing with the market? Look, I mean, we're in one industry that I hate to say it, but it is a little recession proof to a degree because trucking can't stop. I mean, you saw Trump yesterday do a whole announcement thanking the truckers and everything else. Now, remember, I don't do drivers. Like, that's a whole different ballgame. Right. Well, but we work with so many of these trucking companies. It has not been immune to layoffs. I mean, there's been some massive layoffs that have occurred. 700 people here, 300 here, going down to the smaller places that are letting go of 10 and 20. So, for anyone, industry aside, business is interesting in the sense that I think a lot of us are more candidate heavy now. And it's like, now, where do I put these people? And with all the, a lot of the recruiters that I've talked to, a lot of them are struggling with that. A right. lot of them have lost, you know, upwards of 70, 80% of their job orders, and they don't know how to turn that back on. So that's been the one interesting shift that I've seen just by talking to others. Right. Now you, I know you've been very proactive with like your market and your brand. I mean, what are you trying to do with like your content and stuff right now? 
You know, it's, it's, you have to remember, I think that if you really study the science behind eyeballs and usage at the time, I guarantee it's at an all time rate from Facebook to LinkedIn, to Twitter, to Instagram, whatever. And so I think that you have to be going all in right now from a branding standpoint, because people are at home, people are online, right? It's yeah. hard. Like if somebody's at an office, they can't necessarily just log on to Facebook or some of these platforms without maybe getting the dirty look or the eyeballs over the shoulder. Well, right, right now it's fair game. Mm-hmm. Like, and, I, and I will say this too, Donnie, recruiting has changed over the last couple of years, you know, where I think it got too easy. Right. I really do think it got too easy for people when there's 3% unemployment, people came into the game that didn't belong. Mm-hmm. And if you notice what I'm seeing out there, it's not as active or busy as it had been, right? right. There's, a lot, there's a lot of people that kind of went away and got quiet, maybe because they lost some jobs. It's no different than if you look at Instagram, look at all the posers, all the people that were giving you their highlight reel of look at me, I'm a baller. Yeah. They went away, right? Same yeah. thing. So like for the real deal people, like this is the time to stick out and shine. Yeah. Well, I think that this is going to be the time where, um, you know, unfortunately when you're looking at these things, you know, all the circumstances aside, I mean, there's a great opportunity to gain market share for exactly what you said, because all the transactional type recruiters, the ones that came in and kind of been lazy, those are most likely going to be, you know, and hopefully quite honestly, the people that end up going away, you know, so the people that care about their clients, care about the candidate and, and deliver a ton of value are the ones that stick and stay. Um, but the challenge is, is like, you got to be as noisy as you've ever been right now. Yes. Because, you know, the things that you said, I mean, everybody is online. That's probably why we had a challenge getting this onto Facebook is because the band was just not there. Um, people are spending more time on these social media platforms. And I always tell people like, hey, look, the, your, your typical behavior for a lot of people is like, wake up, check my social media feed. That's how a lot of younger generation gets the news. Like, I don't ever turn into any news channels because I don't <laughs> like them. But, right. you know, that's what that's the way a lot of people are operating. And you want to be a part of that conversation right now. I agree. I agree. So, you know, I think the thing is, too, is that you want to make sure and have the hard conversations with your clients about what really is going on. You know, and April, like I always looked at April was going to be like a bench building month. Right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, my God, if I don't get placements, I don't have revenue and then I can't you know, survive or whatever for some of the smaller clients you may have. But you have to be able to kind of weather the storm. And, and look, what happened happened, right? Like no one could have predicted it. I mean, we're even seeing people that, you know, when it comes to the layoffs, you have to think of a rule that's really happening out there. I hate to say this, but it's probably the 10 or 15% of non-producers. And this was kind of an excuse. Or in a lot of industries, you're seeing people that were paid these big high salaries. And these companies are being like, well, why am I going to pay this guy 150, 200 grand when I can just keep the accounts, remove that, you know, and throw them, I don't want to say throw them to the side, but like, you know, give them an opportunity to not be here anymore. And so it's really all in between. Um, But right now it should be the time where you, you have to get creative as well. Like there's been clients where I've gone to and been like, Hey, we're in a little bit of a funk. I don't know if you're going to be bringing on these big salaries, but like there's such an influx of good people. What if we created like a commission only model or what if we created a plan where for these sales guys, we would bridge and gap them or bridge gap for like 90 days. Just give them a kickstart to get off the ground. I've placed multiple people just at a flat fee doing that the last couple of days. And that's something that I created. I had the initiative. Now I will say this too. I think the reason that I've been able to have those hard conversations, if you will, is because the relationship is there. You and I talked about this before. There's a big difference between being a partner and a vendor. Yep. And I think right now this is being exposed. You're, right. you're going to know what side of the fence you're on. Mm-hmm. When you are a partner, to me, what that means is the last couple of years, I've invested a lot of time, energy, money to go to these offices, to go travel all across the country and sit there in the conference room and learn the leadership and understand the culture. This is a huge thing that not enough recruiters are taking advantage of. Right. They, those companies come to us to rely to basically sell their business or their company to the marketplace. Look, I, I can sell anything. I guarantee mm-hmm. you that. But what makes me the most dangerous is when I go to those companies directly and I know it. I've sat in the seat where the people are going to interview. I can describe exactly what the management looks like physically, their demeanor, their emotions, their, everything, how they talk. Otherwise, all you're doing is telling someone how great a restaurant is that you've never eaten at. Right. Right. A hard thing. 
Mm -hmm. No, and I think that's a big thing, you know, from the candidate side too, is like, you're able to really, you believe in the product that you're selling essentially. Right. Yeah. And, and like you're saying right now with being able to have a personal relationship rather than just being somebody that they've ran a transaction with before is a game changer. And I think one of the things you bring up Brent, that it's like, I think a huge opportunity is I, I keep encouraging people like now is the time to really be a leader. Well, what does that look like? If I'm, if I've been a vendor, you know, like being a leader is coming up and, and telling your clients like what they should be focusing on to get through this time and being helpful, you know, like, they may be thinking this way and having the confidence to go, no, 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 no. You need to be doing this right now. If you're going to completely let your foot off the gas and, and, and like you're saying, you've built the foundation to have some of those conversations. Yeah. And, and I just did a video on LinkedIn about this the other day. Like to me, the stupidest thing that companies can do is actually put a hiring freeze on it. I don't know if you saw it, but I compared it to like meat. Like when you freeze a piece of meat, it goes cold and it goes hard fast, right? There is a thawing out process. Like it doesn't, you can't just throw it in the oven and all of a sudden it's baked. Right. The smart companies are engaging. They are having conversations. They're nurturing, massaging, sprinkling ingredient, everything else. So that when the time flips back on, what is going to be the easiest path to success? You right. have to nurture these people because there's really good talent that's available now that for us recruiters, we may have had to chase these people down. Now they're mm -hmm. receptive to us. Now they're having the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Plus I think, you know, going back into the whole leadership thing, like that's where I think there's so much opportunity for others listening. Like people forget that like, okay, they, we, sometimes we look at our clients as they're maybe bigger than us because, you know, uh, they're doing way more revenue technically than we are. And we t start to put the CEO or these, you know, hiring decision makers on some sort of a pedestal when in reality they're humans and they have emotions too. And they need somebody in this, you know, to kind of steady the ship, so to speak and go, Hey, I understand we may be in an uncertain time, but you know, we've got to be doing this and that. I think that's so important right now. And it's, there's, you know, people need that people need help. And I think it's, you know, when we look at it from a community level, when folks like yourself and myself, you know, step up and try to rise to the occasion, other people's list, people uh, listening, that's, what's going to pull three people through this. Well, and I think that's, that's the key part about being so niche too, is like sometimes like I'll call the clients and it's literally just to engage about what's going on in the industry. We don't even talk about business and their needs. Right because they know that we're the ones on the street, right? Yep. We're the ones having the conversations, knowing who's going to lay off, what's going on with commission models, you know, what, what we see good, bad, and different. They rely on you or should as an advisor. That's right. part of the name of the business that I put advisor, right? Because mm -hmm. we're so much more than just slanging resumes and passing talent through like they should be just like in sports. Like look at Adam Schefter, right? Yep. He's the guy on the inside for the NFL that his phone just blows up and he gets Intel. You want to become that source. You want to right. be able to have relationships to share that news with your client where you can be like, Hey, guess what I just heard? Or look, this is the, I don't want to say rumors, but this is the sniff that I got on the streets. I think this would be a value to you. That's right. how you separate yourself. Yep. No, absolutely. Um, for those of you that are listening, if you have any questions, just drop it in that chat chat box there. We'd love to answer anything that you have. Um, pick, pick Brent's brain here, but, what would you say, you know, obviously one thing that you just recommended is, is obviously being niched out that, that makes this a lot easier, but like how, you know, starting this on your own, like how did you go about building your personal brand, you know, in your industry? You know, it's, it, it, it obviously started on LinkedIn. I think a lot of us use LinkedIn as like the main platform. I mean, I probably 90 to 95% of my business. Mm -hmm. A lot of it too was, uh, for me, it's never been really getting uncomfortable being in front of the, the camera or doing videos and stuff like that. But I know for some it is right. Mm -hmm. And my thought about this, I get it. Like it's not for everybody. Right. But how you see yourself is how others are going to perceive you. So right. if you're sitting there mentally, it's a mental game as much as anything. But when you say, I don't like how I talk, I don't like how I look like when you go out and sell, that's going to be picked up on. That's the frequency that you're putting out. So you have to put those walls down mm -hmm. and you have to remember it is never about us. It is always about providing value to the marketplace. That can be simply sharing articles from Inc and Forbes and fast company, anything pertinent to your niche. I think this would be a value to my audience. It's not about job postings and all these other things. It's just, what can I do? that I want to become a dominant feet, a dominant person within the newsfeed. Right. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, you hit a great point there. You know, I always really recommend that it's like, if you start creating content, you want to create content out of a place of goodwill. And when we start coming from that, rather than creating a content and, and then expecting revenue to return from the content creation, 
Um, it just changes the game because you're hundred percent spot on. It's about what, you know, what it, it's in it for them. What's in it for them. That's what marketing is all about. And so sometimes people think they get uncomfortable with social media marketing because they think that they have to promote themselves all the time. And really you're not promoting yourself maybe 10% of the time, if that, and, and the rest of it is goodwill showing up in the marketplace. But the key thing, I just did a video on this actually in my Facebook group yesterday, which was, you know, this one piece of content is going to change your business forever. Yep. And that was just kind of the, the hook into the video. But ultimately it was like, there isn't one piece of content that's going to change your business forever, right? There isn't that one piece of content that does it. It's multiple content. It's showing up so that you're always in the feed so people can see you. Right. I, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a lifestyle. I mean, absolutely. It, it, it yeah. just becomes the new norm. Like I don't even think about it. Like I don't map out and sit here and be like, Oh my God, Tuesday at 7.00 AM. I'm going to put this out and Thursday at 1.00 PM. I'm going to do this. It's natural. Right. I think it has to come to you. The other thing too, a lot of people I think struggle with God, what do I say? Like, I, I don't know really what to say. Who's going to even think about that. It doesn't always have to be your voice. This is where sharing of information or articles, you're still just putting it out there or if you want people to engage with you, a simple formula, if you want people to engage with you, engage with them. So yeah. it's very easy to be a positive voice, a positive force, congratulating people, chiming in, just commenting on their stuff, right? right. And there's so many negative Nancy's still out there. Like, don't be that person. Don't, yeah. don't be that. And, you know, there's a thing that, that to even stick out, there's so many little tricks you can do on LinkedIn. Like, a couple of months back, I think before it got kind of popular, like I put the emojis next to my name. And what you don't realize is little things like that. Every time you comment, every time you like something, yep. that just helps you kind of stick out. Right now, I did like the little circle, like the circle light around my name, which again is very simple and basic, but not everyone has adapted. You got to play chess, not checkers and just be ahead of the game. Little yeah. things. Like that. Yeah. Well, one of the things you're doing is you're not, you're not sitting around asking for permission and looking at what other people are doing. You're testing things, seeing what works. And that's, you know, the number one thing I always tell people to go through my program is like, the, the idea is not to wait for a perfect thing. It's to go out, play the game. And by playing the game, you actually start to see like what your market wants. And like you're saying, like sometimes, you know, and I've actually seen you do a great job of like, you'll share something, put your little two cents in, in like three sentences and boom, you'll get a ton of engagement from it. Oh, absolutely. You know, so yeah. you're doing 30 seconds of work off of somebody else's work. And now you're, you're completely leveraged. And I think that's incredibly smart. You know, and I think too, like, I'm a big believer in this, just like the kids game, follow the leader, follow right. what works. Like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you see something on there that like resonates or sticks out with you, some people call it R and D, right? Research and development. What it's really called is rip off and duplicate. Like if <laughs> it's working, <laughs> use it. Like yep. for, you got to put your own little spin on it, but like, don't be afraid, right? And everything's going to have a run. Everything's going to have Absolutely. a shelf life, but like you got to capitalize on that. You can't yep. even just, just mix up your pictures, mix up your posts. Like, you have to do live beta tests on some of the stuff to see what works. And guess what? If it's not working, there's a button called delete. Like yeah. pull, pull it back. Like who cares? Like pretend like it never happened and move on. Yep. Don't overthink it. There isn't one piece of content that's ever going to change your business, whether it's good or bad. Um, it's just not, just not built that way. You know, if you're out there and you're cons consistently doing it, if you have a bad one, then you have a bad one, you know? Uh, but if you're really just coming from the true self and it is a lifestyle, then you're going to be able to, you know, overcome more because more people are actually connecting. One of the things I think people forget about content is the main purpose of it is connection, mm -hmm. right? When you start to think of it from that standpoint, that it becomes easier to create because I'm trying to create things that could draw people to me, connect people to me. And a lot of times we get stuck in like, I've got to do everything in a how to, how to is not always like where it's at. Like it's just basic connection and connecting with people is actually in a lot of, in a lot of cases more impactful than how to type of stuff. Well, and the formula is simple. People do business with people they like and trust. Yep. How are they going to like and trust you virtually, right? You have to let them know that you are a human, that you are a person. Donnie, you and I have talked about this. Like, you'll see me post pictures of my family. Maybe it's my wife and I at a charity event. Maybe yep. it's my kids. Here's a great tip for everyone watching. This Thursday is bring your kid to work day. You don't think I'm going to have a post ready for that so people know that I'm human. Here's my daughters. Here are my kids. Some people may be reluctant with that. But it humanizes you. It makes yep. you one of them, right? I'm not above anybody. Exactly. And so if I look like, hey, that guy's a cool guy or that guy looks like someone I would talk to, it's just going to increase the activity and the response rate. Yep. What if somebody doesn't like that? Then what? You know, it's, you have to ask themselves why. Like, I get it. Like, some people are a little more guarded and don't want to put themselves out there. But, like, yep. for me, the other thing that I did is basically just show that, like, I'm hustling. Like, there's mm -hmm. no – people read between the lines. 
So anytime that I got on a flight, anytime that I went to Chicago or Atlanta or Dallas, it's so easy just to grab, have someone just take a picture. I don't care if it's in the airport, if it's at a steak dinner, if it's at the Chicago Bean. Like show people that you're moving and shaking and getting yeah. out there, right? No one wants to talk to some guy who's just sitting in his basement all day long because I can sell that. I'm a mover and a shaker. Like I'm getting on the streets. I'm going into these offices. I know what's happening within my industry. I'm dialed in. And you can just visually see that and respect the hustle. Yep. It's going to gravitate people towards you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're, and you're not doing anything outside of just sharing what you're doing. This is me. This is, is what me. I'm doing throughout the day. That's one of the things I think if you were to take about all your, all the conversations you have, just giving people ideas. Like if you were to pick up the phone, you have a conversation with a prospective client or candidate at some point in that conversation, you probably drop some good fire. And so, you know, you could go and create a post on that right after the fact. In fact, that's exactly what I did yesterday. I spoke to a guy who was in, in my thing and he's like, well, I've been waiting to create this content. I've been waiting to put it out and I just haven't really like liked it. And so that's why I went, got off that phone call, literally went live in my Facebook group 30 seconds later, just to talk, because I know that's a relevant thing. If he's feeling that, so is somebody else. So like, as you're having conversations, you can share what's going on throughout your day to build that connection and make, like, Hey, other people feel this way too. Ah, oh, that's me. Right. Boom. Connection. All right. Right. So and, I mean, and, and you have to get into a flow of creativity. Like personally for me, I listen like nonstop. Like I don't really listen to music. I either listen to podcasts and or like motivational videos, Les Brown. I don't care who, that's always going in my background because what it does, it gets my mind turning on like what, again, yep. what value can I bring? Like what, and sometimes I just get fired up. Like if I'm mm -hmm. fired up, I'm a real dangerous person because I want to share messages and I want to, you know, get some things out there. But again, energy flows where energy goes, right? Yep. So like, if you are positive, if you're putting out good stuff, it's going to reciprocate. It's nothing more than a boomerang. Yep. What you get out, you put back, or what you put, put out, you get back. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you just brought up that's, that's, I think, probably the most important thing is the energy part. Like, if you went out and you stumbled all over your words, but you were fired up the entire time, like, people will like that. And I think there's this big myth around, like, especially when I'm doing video, that I have to be, like, scripted, and I've got to have my suit and tie on, and I've got to make sure that there's no ums and no likes. And it's like, nowadays, like, that was probably, like, 10 years ago when, when social media started. Nowadays, people connect with raw, imperfect people. Right. I've never done a video that hasn't been more than one take because yeah. I don't, if, if I do it, I just, I give up and I'll go on to the next day because right. it has to be authentic. It has to be real. And that's, what's going to resonate people. Now there's certain things you can do with tonality and of I mean, course, you, gotta, yeah. you know, you got to have the proper past uh, presentation. I'm a very like hands-on kind of guy. You can see how I talk like that, but you know, it can't be forced because I've seen stuff online where I'm like, that is so cheesy and stupid, or you can even see the edit cuts. It's not the same to me. It's not authentic. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and even when you watch somebody do a scripted video and as I'm trying to get people to do is like, Hey, look, you're better off just winging it and getting better. Because like when you buy into this whole thing, it's a process like where you're at right now, isn't where you started, right? Like when no. you first start, it's a yeah. bigger hill to climb. And you know, the whole idea is to buy into it long term so that you can eventually get better at the skill, you know? And, and that's, when you look at it that way, then it becomes a hell of a lot easier because I'm not trying to be like this fixed product. <laughs> And you have to remember too, like what we do is like, to me, I love this. Like I have so much passion for what we do, but all we're doing is talking to people. Like we're, yep. that's, what we're doing is having conversations. If you have the right, you know, agreements in place with the right companies, you know, you're going to put them in a better situation. You know, you know that you're going to play matchmaker and hook somebody up. You take care of one person that's going to lead to 10. That's what people forget. Like it's not a transactional game. Everyone has a landscaper, a barber, a real estate person, an insurance agent, why should it not be you should not be their recruiter or guy? So when someone's looking, you want to be the person that they go to. But right. if you don't have a brand presence, how are they going to know who you are or even uh, gravitate towards you? Right. Yeah, we got to be out there. We've got to be known. And I think that's the biggest thing that's shifting this industry and a lot of people are starting to catch on to is like the old model of all transactional phone calls is just challenging well, now. And I think, you, look, we live in a visual world. Like, think mm -hmm. about the audience that, like, probably the people that we're placing, they grew up on a phone just scrolling through, like, quick, yeah. quick, quick information. To me, if somebody is just posting verbiage on LinkedIn, that's no different than, like, a job posting. People don't want that. We live in a visual yeah. eyeball world. Give them something to see. Show yourself. Show your office. Show your family. Show your travel. Like, be someone that they want to talk to. Right. What do you feel like? kind of transitioning a little bit, what do you feel like, you know, with content, 
and you're looking at COVID and these, this kind of little lull that the entire country's in, like, yeah, people are still working. There's people's searches going on, but like most people I talk to, cause I talk to a lot of folks in the recruiting industry. Most people are at 50% busy as what they were before. Right. Yeah. But what should be the message right now as, as, as you're going through this crisis? Stay the course. What goes up must go down and vice versa, right? Yep. If you just stay the course, stay committed, stay, stay positive on what you do. And the reality is in life, in recruiting, whatever, you can only control two things, your activity and your attitude. So if you're light on business, then you have to go all in on building the bench and building the pipeline. Again, there's in every industry, there's a mass amount of people. Now, I don't think you want to flip your business model to being like a job placement company all of a sudden, right? Because it's just, it's not feasible. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But you want to be able to have conversations with your clients that you're already in place with. Get creative. Try to understand timelines. If you have to, you know, put someone back to a May 15th start date or June 1, it is what it is. Like control mm -hmm. what you can control. At the same time, this is a good time to step back and almost work on the business. Like if you're yep. not slammed, like we all were six months ago or three months ago with job, 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 jobs. I hate to say that, but that's probably been a blessing in disguise through all this is I've been able to work on not in the business. It's real easy to get caught up in the day to day in the weeds. Absolutely. But now I can step back and be like, okay, now I'm gonna examine what companies maybe I've wanted to get into, but haven't. How now can I go in with a gentle approach and basically contact them? Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to go in with the approach like, I want your business now, but you want to be able to be on their radar so that when things flip, they know who you are. It's not random. Yep. Yep. I just got a comment about work, you know, the truth about working in the business, working on. And I think that's, you know, for me, there's a lot of people that are able to take advantage now because they've, uh, they've uh, you know, feel like they have more time. And I, I think that that's personally I think that's also the stories that we get ourselves caught into. Right. And it's, and it's having the control of like, if I'm the, if I'm at the, if I'm at the founding level of the company, if I'm the leader of the company, I need to be working on myself 24, seven, 365. And I think that's a big thing that people need to buy into is like, there's a lot of ways that we can be doing development ongoing, similar to like the fact that, Hey, I've got, you know, motivational speaking going on. I've got, you know, podcasts going on versus something else because I'm into my development of, of things or I'm working with this coach, but like you should always be implementing and working on your business ongoing. It's just gotta be something that's more intentional. Um, and, and a lot of times we buy into our own excuses of, ah, well, I'm too busy right now. Ah, I don't have time for that. And it's like, yeah, you always have time. It's built. It's about making it a priority. Right. Hey, look, man, I've, I've been in every world. I've, I've been the one man band for two years where I did it all 16 hours a day, seven days a week, the hustle, the grind, waiting, the, waiting on checks, chasing checks. I mean, I've literally lived that life. Right. Yep. And I can relate with anybody that does that. But when you become you either and, and what you've done when you've done that is really just create a job for yourself. Create a job for yourself. Create a job for that, yep. That's all it is. So you have to ask yourself and there's no right or wrong. There's no right, right or wrong on that. But do you want a job or do you want a business? Mm hmm. And that's only something that each individual can, can answer. I will say, as I added team members, and I'm more picky than anybody, like, because it's like, it's you, it's your brand, it's your reputation. You built this baby. You're not just going to pass it off to someone. But once you do that, and you can focus at the top, and you can focus on relationships and business development and trust that the people underneath you are doing what they do, your job as a leader is to make sure everyone eats. You know, make sure that everyone is fed, everyone is happy. Because even right now, I got this question earlier about like leadership and like, you know, some of these leaders are showing fear and all this. I said, the people go as you go. Don, you and I are a sports guy. You, everything Michael Jordan came into the huddle and said, guys, we're going to lose this game. Like, I just don't feel it. I just don't think we're going to win. You ever think that happened? Oh, no. You ever read his book? You ever read the book Relentless? It is contagious, right? Yep. If, they, if they go as you go, if I believe it, you're going to believe it. Yep. Go with me. Get on this track. And and you can't let this stop you from your goals, right? There's going right. to be too many people that are going to look and be like, oh my God, these four or five weeks just killed me and it destroyed me. And like, you can get into that mental game or you can be like, you know what? I survived it. I got through it. We worked through 9-11. I've been around through 08. This is just going to be another chapter in my book, in my journey. And let's right. go. Yep. No, it's huge. And I mean, there's just so much opportunity for it. You know, one of the things, and I see you kind of scratching the surface of, of it and you got it going is, really taking and looking at, 
you know, if I'm the business owner, one of the big shifts that could be done out there is like get other people to fill the roles and you become the predominant, you know, rainmaker, if you will. But more than the rainmaker model, which has been out there forever, is more of like the digital brand. And you're, you're the machine that's constantly creating content. You're the face of the organization. You're always out there. And it's not necessarily that you're the business development handshaker and doing all the sales calls. It could be that, but it's more of like from the content strategy and really looking at like, if you get content right, and especially with some of the things that I help my clients with where you're using automation, you can essentially have a 24 seven, 365 salesperson, right? That's working through, that's driving, driving leadership and leads writing, you know, right to the organization rather than some of the cold and, you know, old school transactional approach. And when you're doing it like how you are, where you're constantly in the marketplace and showing up, then there's the attraction. And like, I think that's where a lot is going, right? When I can attract clients versus all outbound, because the biggest result of attracting is I get more ideal. And now I have a leadership role and I can control the conversation versus, Hey, you're just another recruiter. Um, yeah, I'll throw you in order. Right. Exactly. And that, that's not the kind of clients you want anyways. The formula right. to me is very simple. And everyone knows what I mean when I say that. If you have C client, C clients, you take C candidates, B, yep. B, A, A. Everyone's probably going to have a balance of all of them. But like the better you get, you're just going to attract better to you, which in turn means you attract better candidates. Yep. That's when the game changes, right? Because yep. you don't just want to be putting butts in seats. And I think that that's what happened the last couple of years because there was such a demand for what we do. Now, the other thing I think is like, you have to flip the mindset of like, God, how am I going to win through this? Like, how is this going to actually benefit us? A lot of people that are being part of these layoffs, you know who they are? Internal recruiters. Recruiters, yep. So those people are gone. Like, they don't mm -hmm. need me because I'm not doing these 20-person training classes anymore. So when they start to ramp back up, don't you think we actually are now in more value? Because we already have the network. We've already been having the conversations with people for two months. And it's just going to be a lot easier to outsource it than it is bring it back in house and ramp someone up. We've right. already been tapping the shoulders for two months. Let's go. What do you need? Yeah. People, don't, people have to understand this is an opportunity that we might not even be seeing right now, but you might see this in the next 60 days as things kind of progress and get back to normal. I think that's a huge point. I've been saying the same things in my, some of my trainings lately is that like internally, <laughs> internal teams are being dismantled right now, which is going to create way more opportunity for it us. Just remove competition. Terms. Yeah, yeah, they just removed competition for us. Great. I've been trying to get in there anyways. Now I don't have five people saying they can do my job for me. Let's go. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think those are two of the biggest opportunities we talked about is one that, you know, a lot of the markets, you know, and probably the ones that are, you know, a little bit more shady and transactional don't have approach are going to go away. Internal recruitment teams are going to go away. We're going to be, you know, for those that take the action right now, there's going to be a lot to, to come from this whole thing. And and I think I'm, it's exciting. I mean, I hate saying that it's always a sensitive subject because, there's obviously a very serious issue going on, but we're just talking about business. Like you have to be fired up and excited about what's, oh, what's yeah. out there today. And I want to piggyback on that a little bit because I think a lot of people think, well, if they have if that company has an internal recruiting team, why do they need me? Why would they use me? Right. A lot of the companies that we work with have that internal recruiting team, but I'm going to sell against it because look, we're all trying to get the same end result. We're going to have different audiences. People are going to respond different. If I'm an in-house recruiter and I'm reaching out to somebody, they automatically know who I am and what company I'm representing. Mm -hmm. Third party recruiters, you have to understand, like you hold the mystery card. They have no idea what we're going to pitch them on. They have no idea, right? So my job is just to engage with them. I might mentally know what path I want to take them down, but they don't know if I'm going to talk to them about door number one, two, or three. It's the same as the price is right. We hold that. There's huge value in companies partnering with us because we can, I don't want to use the word weasel, but we can get inside people and they have no idea what we're going to or what path we're going to go down. That's a dangerous, dangerous dynamic mm -hmm. that works really good for the right companies. Why, why would you not want me going on the streets and doing guerrilla marketing for you? Because if I tell people it's legit, they're going to respect and listen to that. Right. You want me on your team. And right. you sure as heck don't want me taking your people. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But that's the leverage you've been able to build because of the brand, because there's a, there's a, there's a perception out there that you could actually do that and you can't actually do that. But when I'm not branded the way, then it takes away some of that potential firepower. Well, you know what it does too? It makes you known as like a force or a bulldog where people are right. like, God, we better sign with that guy. Cause I don't want him coming after us. Right. That's Absolutely. what the does. Yep. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Love it, man. Love the fire. Um, got a question from my good buddy, Noel. 
Um, he was wondering, Brent, do you have any uh, tips for, he's got a smaller shop on how an owner or CEO can stay strategic even when they're involved in tactics for a fair chunk of each day. Say, say that last part one more time. This he's just saying, he's just wondering how he can stay strategic, even though he's still in the day to day grind. Like how do you, how do you balance your day with a strategic oh, I, and working on and versus. Yeah. yeah, I am too, man. I'm, I'm a player coach. I'll never remove that because I like what I do too much. Right. But what I have to do is understand everything's about revenue driving activities. Like where yep. are you going to invest your time? That's all this game is about. And so you have one thing that's really worth for me. I'm just going to give an experience share is time blocking is just saying that, look, from 10 to 12, I'm gonna do nothing but source. From 12 to two, I'm gonna do business development. And just look, we're all busy, right? Our phones blow up, yeah. we get text messages, you get caught up in the email weeds. But the more you can actually structure your day, the more dominant you can get. And I think you have to just every day walk in with a list of like, these are my core four, five items that I'm gonna to handle today. And you can even get real aggressive. Now I've learned this from just some coaching I've invested in. You don't go to number two until you've crossed off number one. Right. Like you can either let the day control. This is such a, a term we've heard a thousand times. Let the day control you or you control it. But it's so true mm -hmm. because if you can just lock in and just do things in strategy, strategic times, like think about sports again, Donnie, you and I are big sports guys, right? People don't, they don't just show up to a practice and just wing it like, Oh, let's, let's figure out what we're going to do today. And we're going to, yeah. like, you guys go run, you guys go shoot free throws. Like it is structured and organized and you have to manage your own company and desk the same way. Yep. Yep. That's great advice. And that's, you know, um, one of the things I always tell people going through the program is like, Hey, working with me is like, Hey, just carve out the time because when you don't have something on your calendar, it's not going to get done. Right. And you know, if somebody's working on personal development, whether it's with me or in any other program, it's usually the easiest thing to convince myself, oh, well, I don't have time. I've got to do all these other things. And then, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. And the next thing you know, tomorrow's next week and next week's next month. And it's, a, and it's a dangerous challenge. But I think the thing is, is like when you're looking at holding yourself accountable, no matter what you're doing, is like getting in the habit of scheduling time for yourself and then having as much value for your time as you would if it was a prospective client or candidate. Because I can promise you, you won't bail on the client or candidate call, but you might bail on the own appointment you have for yourself. And when you can get to that balance, that's what I do is every, all my important activities are on my calendar. And then I hold myself accountable to being accountable to myself, you know? It doesn't have to be non-negotiables. Like it yeah. is what it is. If it's on there, like that's a non-negotiable. And look, things are gonna come up or you're gonna have to pivot here and there, but it doesn't mean you just move on and forget about it. Like yeah. you, that's a beautiful part about what we do is we can control our days. We can control exactly what we do and the flow and when calls are coming in using Calendly or you know, all these different features that make our life so much easier. Right. Well, in, in going into that, you know, like, as we're talking about this, like, where's that shift for you? You're, 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 you're years beyond, but like for you, it's obvious to go. Yeah. You know what? I've got to create content and like that's happening today. Cause I know that's a revenue driving activity. Yep. That's a priority. But for some people that have been so used to, you know, this being the only thing that you win on, right? Like how do you, what's some advice on like how you make that shift to going like content is equally, if not more important than your hundred calls a day. Look to me, cold calling is dead. Cold, yeah. cold calling is dead. Like it's just not the world that we live in anymore. And look, I started recruiting through an MRI fr franchise where I used to be able to change my voice and try to get someone's phone number or pager like old school, right? The game has changed where now you have to be putting yourself out there to get things back. Like content is essential. And again, it doesn't always have to be about you and these jobs you're working on and all that. It's just getting your name out there, getting your face out there. So you become a dominant person. And again, LinkedIn is the tool that we all use. Right. Like the, with, does someone recognize, like a lot of the recruiters that, that are on there, like, are you known? Are you recognized? Any of us can look at an industry and say, I recognize the same 10 people over and over and over. Some of them are good. Some of them are talking just to hear themselves talk and not good, but you're always already making that assumption in your mind. Like mm -hmm. I must know that person because I see them over and over and over. Why not be you? Right. There's a thing is overkill, but there's a, there's a fine balance with it too. It's yep. essential. It's a non-negotiable. You have to be on there and get your face online. Cause right. think about this, Donnie. LinkedIn is the one place that your face is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like the website, people are going to have to search for about us and all this stuff. You are the face. You are the first thing that they're going to see. Yep. Make them remember your name. Love me or hate me. You're going to know who I am. I don't care. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. I use the same philosophy all the time. Yep. 
Um, my buddy Ben just asked, how is your business set up? Multiple full, full desk folks or is it Rainmaker model? So uh, both. So I'm, I'm a player coach myself. Then I have two people that run a full desk, right? So they'll be able to engage with the clients as well as kind of source. And then I have two full-time sourcers. So that's just kind of how I've done it. But again, this has been something over a five-year journey. The first two, two and a half years, I was A to Z. I did everything. Yeah. Personally, for me, I do contingent only. I never went down the retainer path because to me, I wanted to control my day and I wanted to control what things I worked on because you know, there's an ebb and flow, right? You're going to have something that's super hot. You're going to strike that oil and get, you know, five, 10 placements here. Then this is going to pop up where I think if you're on the retainer model, sometimes those people are a little more demanding of your time, energy, and focus. And I just like to be more of kind of a free agent and just kind of work on what I want to work on. But you also have that balance of your contingent, but you also have like the, the partnership, which is, which is a big difference. Yeah. And then myself, like I, like if I'm going to put this, like I try to focus my energy on like the six figure and up type roles. Right. So it's almost like I want to sell the million dollar homes, but I can have my team do a lot of the condos and like, right. right. Stuff. So you, you want to provide your value and worth because that's just going to bring a different audience. Like, what we do is the process is the process of the process. doesn't matter if you're going to place someone at 40,000 or 400,000 and everything in between. Right. You have to just ask yourself, like, at what level do I want to play? I want to play with the big dogs. I want to represent the quarterbacks, not the punters. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. Ben's got a, a really successful uh, staffing and search business out in, uh, out in uh, Houston area. So, um, Houston's a funky freight market, man. I don't, I don't know why I've always <laughs> out there as far as that goes, but got some really good clients, but it's been a, interesting for the freight market. I never personally got into the contract model because I didn't want to be a bank, but mm -hmm. that was just myself, you know? Right. Right. Uh, for those of you just hopping on, we're, we're almost wrapping up here, but if you guys have any questions uh, for Brent, you know, feel free to drop them below. Um, we've just been talking a lot about, you know, the opportunities we're seeing with recruiters, Possibly, you know, the third party agency recruiters like a lot of us here, you know, some of the transactional ones probably going out of business and going away because of this challenge we're in here in this crisis. And the other opportunity is the internal teams um, are, are shrinking down and being laid off right now. So this can create a lot of opportunity for those I'm talking about right now, really making the most of our time, uh, energy and effort on building, you know, our brand during this time and being helpers and being leaders and things like that. So, and, and Donnie too, I think a lot of like the recruiters, maybe like myself, maybe, you know, 10 people or less, five people or less. Like the reason that we can get through this time is because we're small, we're nimble. Like we're not an MRI. We're not in a deco. We're not a, uh, you know, corn fairy, these massive companies. Like those are the ones that are going to be going through the layoffs. Like if you are a dominant player in your niche, you shouldn't be going anywhere. Right. Because we're small and like we can just adapt and like figure it all out, you know? And that's where I think a lot of people go into panic mode. And, you know, look, I, I've talked to a lot of recruiters. I have a lot of friends out there and some of them have these massive overhead and this big payroll and like they're freaking out and I get it. For me, I kind of always wanted to kind of keep it small and keep it all, be lean and mean to a degree. And I think now it's becoming uh, a good thing, obviously, because we've been able to adapt and actually get busier during this time, not slower. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I love it, man. Anybody else have any questions for my man here, Brent? Brent, while they're uh, doing that, what is, um, what is your, uh, how can they connect with you on LinkedIn? You're just Brent Orsuga, right? Yeah, just Brent Orsuga, O-R-S-U-G-A, Company Pinnacle Growth Advisors. Pretty easy to find. It should say at the top recruiter in the trucking industry. And, and, you know, something funny on that. I put that out there five years ago when I just did it for myself. Like who's gonna take that from me? Once you put that out there, my mindset was already there, but I didn't even have one client when I put that out there. Right. Now you become a known figure. So like your personal brand and how you perceive yourself and how you market yourself is something you can control. You can control the narrative. You wanna be able to put that out there so that people can associate you with that. Right? You're not just gonna put a mediocre average Joe, like right. that's what you put out there, or that's the image you give, that's what people are gonna think of you. You got to be your biggest fan. Like T.O. said, you're a Niner fan. I love me some me, right? Yeah. That's the truth. You have to believe you are the best. Confidence comes from competence. Do the work. It's going to gravitate and come back towards you. 100%. 100%. Uh, Shaylee, see, see your question here. So like what, she said, what is your idea for the future of recruiting business? Most of my contracts were canceled. And we were just talking about this. You know, a big thing if, you're, if a lot of your stuff's been canceled, 
Brent and I have just been talking about controlling what you can control right now and really focusing on personal brand, online presence, because your market of clients or candidates are there every, you know, more than ever right now and just playing a long game. You know, I mean, we're not in control of if we're going to be getting stuff tomorrow or 30 days or when all this is going to happen. But like a lot of it right now is just, it's just staying active and being helper and leader. And the reality is this, uh, it's no different than when we started. All of us took that leap of faith. All of us maybe right. came from a big shop and did this. You didn't just walk in and inherit five or 10 accounts day one. You went back to the basics, back mm -hmm. to the grind, built those relationships, probably took on some crappy clients and deals that looking back, you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Yep. What's different now? You've already been through the mud. Yeah, that's a great like point. You just got to be able to go back to the basics, grind it out, hustle, weather the storm, and it'll be fine. But this shouldn't be anything new. That's what that's what recruiters do. We're always yeah. chasing the next. Yep, absolutely. And I think one of the things too is like when you look at it from the grind standpoint, you know, um, it's just re restarting that fire and getting back to like the basics of human humanity. Like we're talking a lot about like branding and online stuff, which might be a new thing for stuff. But like you, we talked about it early on is like simply just picking up the phone without an agenda yeah. to check in on people right now. It, it's, it's probably like, it's actually kind of a blessing because you can pick somebody up, pick up the phone, talk to somebody without a purpose right now. And they'll be receptive because people are just craving human, human interaction. Right. And long. it's not going to be like a cold call, like, Hey, you have any roles, but like, Hey, just checking in. How are you doing? But that's also the power of having the relationship and traveling, yeah. knowing these people. So you can say, how's Billy? How's Sue? How's your wife doing? Right. Yeah. Is everything good? You know, because it's not always about that. And that's where, you know, you truly have a relationship because if you're just a vendor to somebody, like you're just going to talk to some HR person and we're not hiring. Well, that wasn't really the purpose of my call. That's why you got to have multiple relationships within these companies too. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you have someone at corporate, but maybe then you're really tight with a sales manager at each location that they have. Right. Yep. Cause the conversation is going to be different. Yep. But th I think the big thing too, this, this is a, a fine point. You cannot have all your eggs in one basket. Like too many people get comfortable because they're riding this train where 60, 70 percent comes in and that gets turned off. And then what you exactly. always have to do business development. You always have to be seeing what's out there exactly for moments like this. Yep. No, it's so, it's so true, man. Like I've been trying to preach that to people for a long time. Like, oh, well, I'm good. You know, I've got clients and I'm busy right now. And it's like, that is the most dangerous game that you can oh, play. Because it can flip and this like is the that. Exact reason. Exactly. This is the exact example. There's no diver diversification. You could have made, you know, 300K a year on one client. <laughs> and now you're down to zero because you've got nothing else. Shoot, I had one client last year that was hot. Like it's actually a company out of the Bay Area and they were hot. I looked back and made, I think, 220 on them just last year, right? Easy sell, great dynamic. They laid off over a thousand people this year. That's done. Like, yep. It's done. Like I'll never probably play someone for them again. But mm -hmm. if I would have just like invested all my energy and time during that, and then it, like this happens, then what? Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the whole point of being able to leverage yourself and understand that there's other priorities that we need to be doing, building the building the branding twenty four seven, so that we can we can avoid those things as much as we can. And each platform is different, right? Like what you do, like, I remember like there was a, a meme or something where it showed like LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, and like how people portray themselves differently. Like, absolutely. Like for me, LinkedIn is still a very uh, professional platform, but I still absolutely show my family and travel and all that. But I created an, I'm not really an Instagram guy, but I created an Instagram page almost to kind of give people like a day in the life too. Like you can do stories and show the office and show that you're out and about. Again, it's just humanizing. Like I'm real. This is what I do. I, I might even show you, show me playing basketball on the weekends. Like this is who I am, but that's yep. going to gravitate people towards you. Connection. And yeah. It's, it's all it is. Like, cause you, all you want is people to look at you and be like, do I want to talk to that person? Mm -hmm. Are they a jerk or are they actually like a normal dude that like looks kind of, that seems pretty cool. And then yeah. also knows his stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, a, it's good to have a balance of both, but it's also good to just not even, not overthink it, you know? Um, and just, it, it just, just show up and be there because, you know, there's one of the things too, like where people get, they start to look at these platforms. So like the biggest thing that I get from recruiters is, oh, I'm not on Facebook. I don't do Facebook. Facebook's stupid. And it's kind of like, you know, if I really look at Facebook, I really don't like Facebook either, but it's generated me kind of a small fortune. So I'm okay with Facebook because I know how to leverage it for business. And that's like the different thing is like, do I want to be on Instagram? Because like I'm an Instagram personality. No, I could give a shit. Yeah. But do I want to be on Instagram because I want to connect with my audience? That's the shift that I think a lot of people need to have with social media platforms, especially 
you know, if you didn't grow up with social media and then you get on Facebook and you have a bunch of trolls and you have a bunch of political shit you don't want to hear, yeah. like, fine, find out how, how Facebook works for you. Um, and, and mainly how can you leverage it to generate income? That's what I look at social media as is like a place to connect with my audience. And it's a place where I generate a hell of a lot of leads. Well, and it's eyeballs, man. And that, that was the biggest aha moment I had when I started doing video, like, I guess maybe only a, like a year and a half, two years ago, LinkedIn turned it on to everybody. Yep. And I remember just grabbing my phone, ghetto ass video, like the first time, whatever. But what happened was the conference that I went to a month, a month later. And that's where I was like, oh my God, this is working. Because as you walk by people, they do a double take. They look at your name tag. Like, how do I know that person? They didn't have to like it. They didn't have to comment on it, yep. but I know that they saw me. And so when they introduced myself or vice versa, I went up to them. It wasn't random because they can already put a face to a name. Because think about it. So many people just hide behind one picture. A lot of people, it was taken like five or 10 years ago. So they don't even look like that person. Right. But when you can keep stuff fresh. When you can like actually be like, this is me. This is, who I, this is who I am. This is what I look like today. Like, again, it just humanizes you. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Like people do business with people they like and trust. We've said it a thousand times, but it's real. Yep. No different yep. than how we conduct our business and who we choose to go to. Yeah. Well, when you think about it, you know, yep. if, if everybody could do face-to-face -face interactions with people all the time, that would be always the win, but that's not leverage and that's, that's not it. But what's the, what's the most comparable thing? It's not even the phone. It's, it's actually video to get somebody to know, like, and trust. I mean, I can't tell you how many people reach out to me and when they get on the phone with me, they can rattle off all of these different videos. And I think one of the key points you made is it's not about, the dopamine rush of what you think social media is about with a bunch of likes and comments and shares and love. It's about the consistency. It's about showing up, doing it over and over again yep. because people see you, but they don't see you if you're not there, you know, but a lot of people get stuck and they don't continue because they're like, well, I've been posting a bunch of stuff, but nobody likes and comments on it. Like that part is, I can tell you is probably the most irrelevant part. Not saying that you shouldn't want to try to drive engagement and things like that. There's a balance. It's not that you want to, don't want to get there, but you don't want to be discouraged by that because when I first started really committing to, to, you know, putting myself out there with content, I remember like going, like nobody's engaging with any of my stuff. And the next thing you know, I would get on the phone with people and I'm like, man, I see your stuff everywhere. It's great. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like, you know, and especially with the way that I market, like sometimes I'm calling, I'm talking to a market that doesn't know what I'm talking about. So for them to go engage on it, it's not their wheelhouse, right? Well, and I so it's so important to just remember the habit showing up because it's you being there that they make that connection that's powerful. And I've had people that I've talked, never talked to before, but then got on the call and they say, hey, I, like, I love hearing this. I love your content on LinkedIn. Like I love what the, the stuff you put out and because it's just, it's natural, it's who I am. It's very positive. Right. It's, you know, you kind of have that energy. But I mean, that's the thing. Like, I've never talked to this person. Sometimes I'm not even connected with them. But you got to remember, like, especially with LinkedIn, the way the algorithm works, that thing can spread like wildfire without oh, yeah. you even having to do a lot. And oh, yeah. it's like, you just got to, you just got to put yourself out there because how can you market yourself or even mentally think like, I'm the big dog. Like, I know my space. I know the niche. But then people don't even know who you are. Like, really? Right. Like, it's like, you know, so many people are, that I speak with are, are so good at recruiting. Yep. And they're literally like the best kept secret in town because they've been so successful with a certain amount of clients and they've been able to pick up, you know, enough business moving forward. And they use, you know, other strategies to, to generate leads. But like when it comes to their digital presence, like, you know, one of the questions I ask me like, well, what makes you different? And then they'll go ahead and they'll give me their spiel. I'm like, all right, cool. So is your cold market, if they were to look you up on social media, could they tell how you're different from the next recruiter? Like nine out of 10 people are like, no. Well, yeah, because you're not putting yourself out there. What makes Brent different? Well, shoot, you don't need to, it's not a sentence. It's the way you show up and serve your marketplace. Yep. That's differentiation, right? It's not and like when, a set of words. And when you can back it up, like you have oh, to. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. Why, that's why, you know me, riches in the niches. I'm so, such a believer that you have to dominate your space. Like yep. you have to know this stuff. You know, these companies, you know, the commission models, you know what people are going to say before they say them. And then once you start to play in the same space over, I don't care if it's construction, tax, accounting, nursing, your presentation, that opening line is such an important piece of the puzzle too. Like for me, it's the same over and over and over and over. But like I create that instant credibility and authority within the first minute. Right. And the thing that I think is great is like you literally dominate your space. But here's the other thing. Like you still don't have it all. And no, that's what people like, you know, for a lot of people that they go into this, like, 
when you dominate your market, you're just trying to dominate a segment of that market. Actually, Ben was like, oh, we might be, pl- we might be playing against with some of the same freight forwarders out here because his, you know, his company, right? And yeah. it doesn't matter because there's so much business. And when you're focused on dominating an area, there's so much business and there's plenty for everybody else too. Like, yeah. and you're still dominating, right? And like, and like Ben, if he's still on, like I do a lot within like the 3PL and like truckload broker space, there's 18,000 of them. Yep. Now, every, like every industry, there's going to be a top 50, top 100. Of course. Yep. And you want to have some of those accounts, no doubt. But there is enough for everybody. And look, again, going back to what you can control. If I do my job as good as I, you know, talk and back it up, it doesn't matter what you do. Right. Because if I, all I want is the opportunity. All I want is the chance. At that point, it's on me to, like, do what I say. But I just want to get in the door. Even from, like, a business development standpoint, give me a shot. I'm contingent. What does it matter? The exactly. ultimate goal is you want the best talent in here. You don't want me going to the market and bringing those people. It's on you if you hire them. There's only a fee for a pure exchange. I bring you what you want. I get what I want afterwards. Everyone yep. wins. Why wouldn't you want me out there doing that? Yep. Well, that's the, that's the beauty of, you know, when you have like the, the one, one, two punch of, you know, how to market and you know how to deliver. Right. And a lot of people, you know, and I, probably most people listening on this, on this call, I would guess have the delivery part dialed in right yep. now. Now it's like you say, it's like, Hey, I just want the at bat. Like give me the at bat because if I get the at bat, like I'm going to, I'm going to crush this thing. And I can and assure you is more is I need more at bats. <laughs> but I'll <laughs> right? tell you this. I, I bet the last 10 clients, no joke that we brought on, I didn't go to them. Right. They came to, they came to me. I've seen you. I heard about you. You know, I at least want to engage with you. And sometimes I've turned down, I turned down a lot of business now. I mean, mm-hmm. luckily we're fortunate enough to be in that position where early on, like most people, I was like, oh my God, you'll give me a job order. Like, that's amazing. Great. Here's 10%, like crap, right? Like garbage. <laughs> but then like now you just, you start to become exclusive. You start to become known. You start to become, well, that guy only works with the best. So we want him working for us. And that's where you become dangerous because now you can choose what you want. You don't have to get the scraps anymore. Right. Right. That's huge. Well, right on, man. Um, before we wrap up, guys, I just want to give you guys one more chance. If you have any questions for Brent here, questions for me, drop them in the comments. We're going to wrap this thing up here in a few minutes, unless you guys keep us talking. So, <laughs> but I love, I mean, I love this stuff. I'm the most passionate person when it comes to recruiting because all we do, like we're, we're fortunate. We get paid and we can get paid very handsomely by simply helping people. Just like the Zig Ziglar quote, right? The more people you help get what they want, we want, we get what we want in return. The formula is simple. You can't force this stuff. You can never come to it with your own agenda. When it works, it works. And everyone knows when they try to force that deal through, gosh, I I really need this 10 grand or 20 grand. Like, let me just see if I can do it. It's always going to come back to bite you. Right. Know your niche, do things the right way, treat people as people, know that we all deal with the crap, the counter offers, the, 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 the dead mothers that have happened 50 times. I mean, all the stuff that these excuses that people come up with. Stay the course, do things the right way, build true relationships, and it's all going to work out in your favor. Wow. Appreciate it, Brad. What's one last uh, piece of advice you can give for everybody right now? What should we be doing right now? I know we probably talked about it, but is there anything outside of that, what we've talked about that like, you're like, we got to be doing this? Get your face out there. Right now, when everybody is at home, everybody is on their phone, everybody is online, become a dominant force. I don't care if you're commenting and liking other people's stuff and you need to play the piggyback game. If you need to share industry related news, do a video. Now's a better time than any. Just get yourself out there. Do not be on the sidelines. You've got to play ball. Love it, man. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time today. Everyone else, I got Andrew, Diane, Faithy, Matthew, Morris, Noel, Philip, Ben, Shaley. Thanks so much for being here with us. You guys have a great weekend. Uh, Brent, thanks, man. We'll talk to you, uh, talk to you again real soon. Anytime, man. Thanks, All guys. Right.